Hey guys, let's look at dependent events. We're going to answer the question, what are dependent events and how can the probability of them be determined? So dependent events are two or more events where the outcome of one event does affect the outcome of the other event. If you remember from the last lesson, independent events do not affect the outcome of other events. So first, let's determine if these events below are independent, where one event does not affect the other, or dependent, where one event does affect the other. So flipping two coins and they both land on tails. If we flip two coins and one lands on tail and one lands on heads, neither of those are going to affect the other, so that would be an independent event. Two says the captain of the soccer team is selected, then the co-captain. So that is going to be a dependent event because once the captain is selected, he can no longer be the co-captain. So one event does affect the other. Number three says drawing the queen of hearts from a deck, then the joker. So the key here is they do not tell us that the card is going to be replaced. So once we draw the queen of hearts, there is more of a chance that you will draw a joker because that queen of hearts is gone. So this is a dependent event since one does have effect on the other's probability. Let's look at four. It says pulling a white sock from a box, replacing it then a black sock. So this one is going to be independent and the key part is replacing it because once they replace it, you have just as likely of a chance to draw a black sock as you did when you drew a white sock. And then the last one says pulling a white sock from a box, not replacing it, then a black sock. So this one is dependent because after you pull out the white sock and you do not replace it, then that is going to change the probability of drawing a white or a black sock the next time. So let's talk about how to find dependent probability. Dependent probability can be determined by multiplying the probability of each event happening. So we will find the probability of the first event and then we will have to find the probability of the second event, but after that first event happened. So the question here is what is different about finding dependent probability versus independent probability? Well, with the independent probability, since one event did not happen another, they had the same total outcomes. On this one, since probability of A is going to determine or affect the probability of B, they're going to have different totals. Think about the replacing it and not replacing it. In a dependent event, you don't replace it, so then that's one less for the next total. So the second event will have a different total number of outcomes independent events. All right, let's look at number one. It says Paula goes to a dessert buffet shown below. She chooses one dessert, then another. So it looks like there's three pieces of cake, two cupcakes, and five cookies for a total of 10 desserts. So let's look at this first question. It says, what is the probability that she selects a cookie, then a piece of cake? So let's start with the cookie. There are five out of the 10 cookies. So she's gonna start with the 10 desserts and five of them are cookies. That would simplify to one half. After she takes a cookie, the new total is going to be nine. So now she has a one, two, three out of nine chance of selecting the cake. Because if she took a cookie, that would go away and our new total would be nine and then she would select a cake. And three out of nine simplifies to one third. So to find this probability, I would do one half times one third. 
one times one is one, two times three is six, so this probability would be one out of six. Okay, let's look at the second part. What is the probability that she selects a cupcake then a cookie? So there's two cupcakes, so the probability whenever she first goes up would be two out of 10 for selecting the cupcakes, which simplifies to one over five. And a cupcake would be gone, and the new total would be nine. And five of those would still be cookies. So to find the probability of a cupcake then a cookie, we would do one out of five times five out of nine. One times five is five, five times nine is 45, and then both of those numbers are divisible by five, so I could simplify this to one out of nine. So that would be the probability that she selects a cupcake then a cookie, one out of nine. C says, what is the probability that she selects two cupcakes? So she's gonna go up there twice. The first time it looks like this, and two out of the 10 desserts would be a cupcake. And then if she took a second cupcake, it would be a one out of nine chance because there'd only be one cupcake out of the nine remaining desserts left. And now I would multiply these to find the probability. Two times one is two, nine times 10 is 90, and both of those numbers are even, so I'm gonna divide by two, and I would get one out of 45. Okay, two says Miss Jones puts the letters mathematics in a bag. She draws a letter, does not replace it, then draws a second letter. What is the probability of her drawing an M, then an S? So the first thing we need to do is count how many letters there are in mathematics. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So there's 11 total letters to begin with. So whenever she draws the M, there's 11 total and two of the letters in mathematics are M. So that probability would be two out of 11. Then she drew an S. There's only one S, but there would only be 10 letters remaining after she drew that M. So we would do two over 11 times one over 10 to find this probability. And two times one is two. And 11 times 10 is 110. And both of those numbers are divisible by two. So we would get a probability of one over 55. Let's look at number three. Hayden takes two pieces of candy for a snack. What is the probability that he takes two pieces that are not candy corn? So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out the total pieces of candy. Two plus four is six, plus two is eight. And two of the pieces are candy corn, which means six of the pieces are gummy bears or lollipops. So when he takes his first piece, he has a six out of eight chance of not getting candy corn. And then that total goes down to seven after he took one piece. And if he took a piece that was not candy corn, that means there's only five left. So we would do six over eight times five over seven to find this probability. Six times five is 30, eight times seven is 56. And both of these numbers are divisible by two. 30 divided by two is 15 and 56 divided by two is 28. So the probability would be 15 out of 28. 